Tech Wizards 2019. This event is brought to you by Market Timing Research and Trade Out Loud. My name is Anka Metcalf and I am going to be your host today. We have a great lineup of speakers and I'm so excited and these are some of our favorite tech companies so we decided to put this event together to share it with you guys. With us today, we have Sean McLaughlin, and uh, he's with Trade Ideas. It is an amazing product. Uh, it's a real-time scanner that I have been using for so many years, about 13 years, if I'm not mistaken. Then we have Jake Wojastic from TrendSpider. He's going to be sharing some really pretty cool, amazing charts with you guys and some charting software. We have Brian Miller from Optimized Trading. We have Jonathan Mallard from Benzinga Pro, and we have John Voorhees and James Ramelli from Options Hacker. But before we begin, let me remind you that all information provided today is for educational purpose only and should not be construed as investment advice regarding the purchase or sale of securities, options, futures, forex, or any other instrument of any kind. Trading involves high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. You, should, you could lose money. Before deciding to trade, you should carefully consider your objectives, your level of experience, and risk appetite. Individual performance depends upon each person's skill, time commitment, and effort. Results may not be typical, and individual results will vary. So you must do your own research to make your own trading decisions. Okay, so our first presenter is Sean from Trade Ideas. Sean, you have the mic and you can start sharing your screen. Wonderful. Thank you, Anka. Let me uh, load up this screen here. Uh, let's see, share screen. I think you can see me. Uh, yes. Pull that up. Is that good? Perfect. <clears throat> All right. Wonderful. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Anka, thanks for having me. Uh, you and I met for the first time, I believe, last summer. Is that correct? Back in That's Orlando? That's correct. Exactly. We met last summer. Um, with Wonderful. Jane. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Uh, we should that... do this again really soon. And yes. yeah, and Sean, uh, please remind everybody, if you want to remind everybody that you guys are going to have a great event uh, in October, I believe. Uh, yes, we have our fourth annual Trade Ideas Summit taking place uh, the last Saturday in October in downtown San Diego. Um, I'll I have my actually I have my contact info right here. If anyone's interested in that, uh, you can send me an email at uh, email at sean at trade ideas dot com. Happy to get you that info. Uh, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have a great lineup of presenters and a great uh, way to uh, interact with people. And it's uh, small and intimate, so that we all get to know each other and and learn together and uh, it's a lot of fun and it's a beautiful location. So uh, thanks for letting me uh, plug that Anka. <laughs> mm -hmm, absolutely. All right. Well, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sean McLaughlin. Uh, I'm well, known on Twitter as uh, Chicago Sean. I've got my Twitter handle there at the bottom. Uh, and I am the senior market strategist at Trade Ideas LLC. I, I also do options trading research for All Star Charts. Uh, so you may know me from there as well. Uh, been been trading for about 21 years. I started in the summer of 1998 uh, at the very uh, the final leg of the dot com boom was just getting started, and that's when I started. And uh, I'll tell you, the first four years of my trading career uh, were wonderful and exciting and profitable. Uh, but I could tell you that the last 17 years of my career, I've spent uh, those 17 years unlearning all the bad habits uh, that I learned in those first four formative years. Um, a little bit more about me uh, after I started trading stocks in 1998, did that for about four years, eventually uh, moved into futures, uh, became a member of the Chicago Board of Trade. I moved to Chicago and um, traded futures. I ran a small small hedge fund uh, trading, uh, trend following commodities uh, in much, very much in the vein of the, uh, the turtle trader experiment. Anybody familiar with the Richard Dennis story and all that? Um, and then I moved into uh, options around 2007, trading options. And, uh, and really to this day, I continue trading options and I still swing trade stocks and, and occasionally day trade stocks. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that here in my presentation. So, all right, we're going to talk about 
some stuff here. We're going to talk about some unpleasant stuff to kick this off. I mean, I, I know this is the best way to kick off a Saturday morning is to talk about some unpleasant truths. <laughs> um, but look, I, I, I'm going to talk about things here that uh, are, I'm not pushing the envelope here. I'm not going to tell you anything you probably don't know if you've been trading for any length of time. But it's important to lay the foundation here of why we're doing what we are doing. Yeah, turn that little alert off. Um, so let's talk, uh, I've got seven reasons here why traders failed. There's probably, there might be more, there might be less, but, but for the majority of traders, traders fail for one of these following seven reasons. And there's no particular order of significance here. Uh, one isn't more important than the other, uh, but let's start right out with uh, position sizing. And by the way, I'm going to talk about some, you know, examples from my, my real life here, uh, of trading mistakes I have made. Uh, so I try to keep this personal. <laughs> uh, so position sizing, right? That's an obvious one. People trade too big or too small. Uh, they don't get the position sizing right for the type of risk that they want to uh, accept in their trading. Um, position sizing is, is, it's, you know, maybe you have a small account and, uh, but you really want to trade hundred share lots. If you're trading stocks, you really want to trade thousand share lots because you, you know, all you're thinking about is the money you can make. You're not thinking about, well, what happens if it doesn't work out? Uh, trips a lot of people up. Big losses. This is an obvious one, right? Traders fail because a big loss or a big series of losses wipes them out. Uh, you know, there's there's really any trade you put on. There's really there's five outcomes. There's five potential outcomes. You can win big. You can win small. You can scratch the trade. You can lose small, or you can lose big. If you could. If all you did, if the, if the only thing you changed in your trading right now is eliminate the big losses, but still had the same amount of small losers you have, still had the amount of scratches that you have, still have the amount of small winners you have, and then have the occasional big winner. If that's all you did and just, just eliminated the big losses, I promise you the math would work out in your favor. You would probably become a profitable trader. It's just math. Uh, another reason traders fail small wins, and I, and I have a perfect, very painful ex, uh, example to, to speak to this on small wins. Small, it's, it's, counter, it's counterintuitive, right? If I'm winning, how could I be losing? Well, if your wins are too small and you, and you don't take advantage of the opportunities that you have when you have them, uh, that's a long-term recipe for failure. Now, my example goes back to, I believe it was, uh, I, I may have the year wrong here, but I believe it was 2014. It might have been 2015. Um, I got in incredibly bullish on Tesla. At the time, Tesla was trading at $40 a share, give or take. Uh, this was before Tesla had the big run. And for whatever reason, I can't even really point to the reason, but I felt like I had an epiphany or maybe that's the wrong word, but I felt overcome with bullishness for Tesla. I just loved the, what they were trying to accomplish. I was, uh, I, I thought that Elon Musk was a visionary. Uh, I mean, whatever. I just, I, I just became incredibly bullish uh, on the stock. And so I put a lot of time and effort into building on paper a strategy that I would use, a long-term strategy that I would execute uh, to take advantage of my long-term bullish point of view. And so what I did uh, is I, I put together, I'm not going to get into the details of the trade, but it was, it was an options trade. I was, I was going to leverage options uh, to, uh, to, get into, uh, to get into a position and hopefully a position that I could ride for uh, many months or a couple of years. Uh, you know, it wasn't just a set it and forget it kind of trade. There was, you know, adjustments that would have, have, regular adjustments that would have to be done along the way. But nonetheless, I had written out on, by by, by hand on um, three or four sheets of paper, I wrote out a very detailed strategy of how I was going to execute my plan. And I thought the strategy made a lot of sense. And I thought, hey, if Tesla does what I think it's going to do, this strategy is really going to be a home run. Uh, excuse me as I take a sip of coffee. It's early out here out, out west. <laughs> um, so with my plan in hand and my excitement for the trade, I my initial trade on. I think I invested somewhere around somewhere between five and ten thousand dollars in in my in my options trade um, to get started. And lo and behold, uh, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. But my timing of getting into this trade could not have been better. 
uh, the, the stock Tesla immediately started trading higher, like the next day after I put this position on and it went aggressively higher. I started putting this trade on with Tesla around 40, 42 bucks. And within four weeks or so, Tesla had already traded up to $65 and I was sitting on some tremendous gains, at least tremendous gains for me. Um, at the time that trade was my best trade of the year. The open profits I had on that trade was my best trade of the year. Well, I'm going to show you how I turned my best trade into the year into my worst trade of my career. <laughs> okay. This trade actually turned out to be my best, my best, uh, my largest win of the year and my worst trade of the year. And that is because once I was sitting on these big gains, Tesla went up to 60 some dollars. And I was, I'd been in the position for, I think four weeks or so. I mean, just tremendous win right out of the gate. Here's what happened. Earnings came up. There was an earnings event. And here I am sitting on tremendous open profits, open P&L, and I got nervous. I said to myself, Sean, this stock went a lot faster than I thought it would. It went way higher than I thought it would, or at least, you know, faster than I thought it would. And now we're at earnings. There's a lot of premium in these options. I need to hedge up my risk because who knows what's going to happen in the next earnings report. Uh, you know, this thing could drop 20% overnight in a heartbeat and wipe out 90% of my gains, right? That did not sit well with me. And so instead of following my plan, and my plan was intended to be a long-term plan, I got spooked because I guess maybe in my head I was used to small wins and here I was sitting on a huge win for me. Um, and I hedged up my position. What did I do? I sold at the money calls that were expiring like within like seven days or something. I did that the day before earnings. Well, all proud of myself and thinking I did a really smart thing, um, you know, hedging up my risk and, and expecting the calls to expire worthless and then I'll just keep riding my original position. Uh, the opposite happened. What happened? Tesla announced earnings. Stock gapped tremendously higher. I don't know the exact numbers, but I think it closed before the earnings event around 65-ish, and then it opened up the next day around 100, and it never looked back. Tesla began its run that we all remember that went up above 300. I think it went all the way up to 400, uh, but I didn't participate in any of that. I took my gains off the table because I was too worried about letting a, uh, my, my, my wins uh, get away from me. And I, st <laughs> I, I it, it became so painful to me to watch uh, Tesla keep running, knowing that I had the position, uh, had this had this perfect strategy to to participate in that that position. And uh, I mean, the 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 money that I left on the table uh, was life changing money. I mean, retirement money. <laughs> <laughs> I could be sitting on an island right now and not trading another day in my life and be completely fine with that had I executed my plan uh, the way I planned to. But instead, um, I, you know, I just, I got scared. And so that was a long winded way of telling you that, look, if, 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 if you, all you're doing is taking small wins and you're not allowing yourself to have those big wins, that's a recipe for failure because you need those occasional large wins to keep you in the game. Sometimes the large wins make up everything, right? Now, look, that Tesla trade again, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. It was my best trade of the year in dollar terms, right? I made, it was the trade I made the most money on that year, but it was absolutely the worst trade of my career because I had the plan. I had the position. All I had to do is follow the plan, take my emotions out of it. And I, <laughs> I might be retired right now. Can you tell I'm, I'm bitter about it? I'm, I'm still bitter about it. It's been years and I'm still bitter about it. All right, let's move on. Another reason traders fail, poor strategies, right? Now, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm a tinkerer. I'm, I'm always thinking of new strategies. That, that's something I enjoy doing. I, uh, I, I, I don't know. I get, a, I get a rise out of coming up with newfangled ways to make money. And, uh, but the problem is, is many of us come up with poor strategies. I come up with poor strategies all the time. Uh, and poor strategies, uh, no matter how well-intentioned, if it has no edge, you're not going to make any money. And that's a, a, a reason why many traders fail. They have a strategy that they think is going to make money, but for one reason, or no, one reason or another, it's just, it's a dead end. Another reason traders fail is utter undercapitalization. And this is related to position sizing. Uh, but a lot of times traders who are undercapitalized, they take on positions that are too large for their account. You know, they're so dead set on 
trading 100 share lots or 1,000 share lots where they're so dead set on making $100 a trade or $500 a day or 1,000 bucks a month, you know, whatever their target is. It doesn't matter what the target is, but more often than not, the expectations of what you expect to make aren't really realistic with the capital base that you have. And I'm certainly guilty of that. And that's related to wrong expectations. I mean, I told you I started in 1998 and in those first four years I started trading, there was ridiculous amounts of money being made by day traders. And not only day traders, but day traders with who came into the business with little to no experience. And I was one of those. I'm raising my hand over here. You can't see it. But I traded in an office with 40 other traders. We were all in our 20s, early 20s. And all of us had no Wall Street background whatsoever. Uh, but through, you know, the way the market was uh, at the time, it's hard to explain, but just it was, you know, in hindsight, it was easy money. And traders in my office, guys in their 20s, were making 50, a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars a month regularly for two years from 1998, actually for three years from 98 to 2001. That's the kind of money that these 20 year old kids, myself included, were making. And for me being new to the business and for all of us being new to the business, that really set a, a wrong expectation. We didn't know because we were all new. We just thought this is how trading is. This is how the stock market normally is. But hindsight being 2020, we all know that that period of time from 1998 to 2002, that was absolutely not normal. That was not a normal period of stock trading. That was uh, one of the most epic uh, bubbles, stock market bubbles in history, rivaled only by the 1929 bubble. Um, and, uh, you know, we <laughs> all, the, all the skills that we learned in that environment did not translate once the market kind of reverted back to its long-term mean, so to speak. Uh, so wrong expectations can absolutely trip, uh, trip uh, traders up. And the last one I'll list here is being undisciplined. This is pretty obvious, but, and I, and I had a perfect example with my Tesla trade. I was undisciplined, right? I had a strategy. I had all the rules in front of me. I knew exactly what I was supposed to do, but I got undisciplined. I, th I thought I could outsmart my own system. I thought I could um, be cute and nimble. Um, the fact is I was undisciplined and it cost me big time and it cost many traders. Now, these are seven reasons why traders fail. This is not all encompassing, but I would imagine that uh, you could probably bucket most reasons traders fail under, into, somehow into these seven items. And you know, this a little sidebar, uh, you know, one thing I like to talk about a lot with traders is, is I talk about the paradox of trading success. And, and what that means is, you know, you could fill a room with 100 successful traders and I promise you, all 100 of those traders make money in different ways. Now, there may be some commonalities between people. Some people might be trend followers and some people might be options premium sellers and some people may be mean reversion traders and some people may be scalpers and some people may trade pre-market penny stock movers, whatever, it doesn't matter. So there may be some commonalities, but at the end of the day, every one of those 100 successful traders, I promise you, makes money in, in their own unique way that's, that's unique to them. Now, on the flip side, you could fill a room with a thousand unsuccessful traders, and I'd be willing to bet you that of those a thousand unsuccessful traders, the reason they fail falls into one or a handful of these seven reasons that we have listed right here. And so, what I call the paradox of trading success is that if there's only you know a handful of ways people can lose money, but there's an infinite amount of ways that people can make money, why is it so goddamn hard, right? You would think it'd be easy. If there's so many ways to make money, I should just, you know, throw money in an account and start plugging away. It's easy, right? Well, that's, that's the paradox of trading success. There's an infinite amount of ways to make money, yet it's so hard. <laughs> uh, so anyway, wanted to throw that out there. But I want to offer you all a mea culpa. Uh, we talked about a lot of reasons traders fail, but I'm going to talk about the biggest reason I think that I have not found consistent success throughout my career. I've, I've had many runs of fantastic success, but my biggest struggle as a trader has been maintaining that success. You know, I might have a run of six months or eight months or a year where I'm doing really well and executing my strategy and the, the returns are totally justifying the risk and it's wonderful. And then boom, 
reality smacks me in the face and, uh, and then I'm back to the drawing board. I've repeated that process more often than I wish to count. Uh, but the biggest reason why I, I feel I've struggled to maintain consistent, sustainable trading success is strategy drift. Strategy drift to me for much of my career has been a dirty word uh, because let me tell you what's happening. I come up, I told you before, I'm a little bit of a tinkerer, right? I like to come up with different strategies, different ideas to make money. And I'll spend a lot of time coming up with an idea and then I'll start trading it. And then first signs of trouble, and it, like a drawdown or a big loss or, or whatever, something throws me on tilt and I immediately scrap the strategy, go back to the drawing board and start something new. I've repeated that process hundreds of times in my career and it's absolutely frustrating. And why, why is strategy drift so damaging, at least for me? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from, from my point of view here, okay? Why has it been bad for me? Well, let's go through some steps here of, of the process for strategy building, and this will tell you why it's been bad for me. The first step for building a strategy is you got to come up with an idea, right? I mean, ideas are a dime a dozen. Uh, you know, it's, it all comes down to execution, right? I, everyone's got great ideas, but who can execute on those ideas? Um, but, uh, you know, you, you first go up with an idea. Let's say, who I want to, I want to intraday trade stocks. I want to be an intraday momentum buyer of breakout stocks. So I want to buy stocks making new intraday highs. For example, I'm just making something up. That's, that's an idea. That's a, you've just conceived an idea. What's the next step? Next step is to model that idea. What does that look like? How does that look in practice? Like, what's the trigger I'm going to use to get into a trade? And what types of stocks do I want to execute this strategy on? I don't want to trade every stock, right? Like, maybe I don't want to trade penny stocks, and maybe I don't want to avoid stocks with a market cap below X percent or X, X number. Or maybe I don't want to trade stocks that uh, don't pay dividends. I mean, whatever. It doesn't matter. But you got a model idea. Like, what does it look like? How, how does it look in practice? How would you execute it? And once you've done that, then it comes down to idea testing. That's the next step. You got to start. Uh, you got to start back testing, right? You got to start uh, looking through the data and seeing how this this strategy idea how how it would have performed uh, in the past to give you an idea. Hey, am I on to something here, or am I completely off base? Right? I mean, trade ideas, and we'll talk about this a little bit. But trade ideas offers a, a ability for you to build strategies, and you can run back tests. And, and one of the things I'll often do is. I'll come up with an idea and I'll run a quick back test. And if the PL curve just goes from upper left to the bottom right, meaning it's just sloping straight down, well, that's probably a good idea, a good uh, indication that my idea really has no merit. And uh, let's maybe throw this one out and go back to the drawing board. Whereas if the equity curve is upsloping up into the right, uh, that may mean I'm onto something. So, okay, let's keep plugging away. Let's keep, let's keep digging here. There's, there's something. Uh, which really kind of leads us to the optimization step, which is the next step. It's, it's once you've started back testing your strategy, the next step is to dig into the data and, and look at, you know, where's the, where's the positive performance coming from? What's, what's the drag? What's holding it back? What's the cause of the bigger losses? What's the cause of the, the win rate? That kind of stuff. And you start going through the data and start optimizing. Okay, you, maybe the data tells you that, all right, it looks like any stock trading below 20 bucks a share uh, doesn't work well with this strategy. So let's filter out stocks below 20 bucks. And it might find out that uh, stocks that have a, uh, you know, a float of less than you know, 50 million shares, those, those don't perform very well. So let's, let's filter those out. And on and on and on, you go down the list. And this takes time, but, uh, but it's a very important process. And once you've com completed the optimization, the next thing is forward testing, uh, commonly referred to as paper trading right? You start trading your, uh, your idea in, in a live market, not with real money. You're not trading real money yet, but you're, you know, you're watching the market as the market's unfolding and taking trades as if you were trading for real. Uh, this is a very important step. You got to see, okay, it worked in the past. Is it still working now? And assuming that the forward testing uh, yields positive results and things are looking good and you haven't missed any warts here or there, um, then you have to put money to work. Now, I've been guilty of this oftentimes, just plowing right ahead and going full size and 
putting all the, the, the risk capital I have available, putting it right on the line, um, I could tell you more often than not, that's a bad idea. It's better to just start really, really small with that strategy. If you want to, if you're thinking you're going to be trading a hundred shares, maybe trade 10 shares, <laughs> something insanely small because you, you just want to see once you start actually executing real orders, you want to see what are the actual effects of slippage and what are the actual effects of, of uh, timing. You know, it's, it's, it's all theoreticals up until this point. Uh, you've built in some assumptions, I would hope. You've built in some assumptions about what uh, slippage would cost you and how the commission's impact. But until you actually see it in real life, you don't really know. And once you've had that, well, we all hope that uh, everything works out and it's time to size up and, and go swing for the fences and, and make our money. But the reality is once you've put that money to work, uh, eventually you, you find a wart you find something you overlooked. Uh, there's a, you know, sometimes it's an obvious like, oh man, you slap your head. Like, how could I not have thought of that? Other times it's, oh wow, it's eye opening. Like, wow, I didn't even consider that that's a possibility. That's, that's crazy. Okay. I need to account for that. And then, so you circle back and sometimes you circle back all the way back to idea conception. You're right back to the drawing board. Now, all of these are very necessary and important steps. But the one thing that's not mentioned here is that all of this stuff takes time. It takes a lot of time if you're doing it right. And my problem as a trader is that I would go through these processes and I would build these strategies by hand. I would back test them by hand. I'm, for, uh, I have to admit, I'm not very computer savvy. I'm not like a coder. I'm not, uh, I'm not I can't do stuff that way. I, I have to do it by hand. I'm just old school like that. And that's a, it's a limitation of my own. I understand that. But, um, but for a lot of my career early on, I would do all this stuff by hand and it would, uh, it would just take time. I mean, it was a valuable exercise. Don't get me wrong, but it just takes time. And you know what? Time is money, right? We're traders. What, why else are we here? We're here to make money and time costs money. And so if I'm going through this process of coming up with ideas and then finding out they don't work or that I circle back and start over again, well, if that, that could be a three week process of, you know, testing ideas and getting right back in the market with a new strategy. That's three weeks that I'm not making money, right? Now, I don't know about you, but I've got bills to pay. I've got rent to pay, food to buy, uh, you know, insurance to pay for, things like that. If, I'm, if three weeks go by and I'm not making money, well... I guess it's better than losing money, but hey, we're here to make money. Uh, so all of this takes time and it costs money. And that's, that's been a, a problem for me. It's slowed, it has slowed down my growth and it has frustrated me to no end. Um, so this is where we get to with, with trade ideas. And that's really the point of, of my presentation here is, is trade ideas. And I don't know why I don't have trade ideas listed on the slide. It's kind of a <laughs> faux pas on my part. Uh, but uh, Trade ideas has found a way to uh, take my greatest weakness, and they didn't build it for me, I should point out, but <laughs> it works well in my favor. Trade ideas has found a way to take my greatest weakness, and that is strategy drift, and turn it into an asset, turn it into a strength. What they've done is they've built an artificial intelligence engine that we call Holly, and the artificial intelligence engine is a collection of 60 plus strategies that are constantly being optimized on a daily, nightly basis. So maybe I should back up here. Trade Ideas, for those of you who don't know, Trade Ideas has been around since 2003. Uh, we are a firm built by traders, built for traders. I know it's a cliche to say that, but it is absolutely true. We're a small team. We have uh, just over 20 employees. And every one of us, with the small exception of a couple administrative people, um, every one of us either is currently a trader or has traded uh, or has grown up in the trading business. So we all understand trading. And the team here at Trade Ideas over the years has built uh, approximately 60 plus strategies uh, that have become part of our AI. These are strategies built by our traders that have a statistical edge that have been documented to perform over time. What the AI does is every night when the market's closed, the AI will go in and will 
back test each strategy to see how it's performing currently in the current market environment. And then it will go through the process of steps of optimizing that strategy. This is the time. Con- this is one of the major time consuming parts that, that I used to do by hand. The engine will do it for me. It will optimize 60 plus strategies. This is a process that if I were to do this by hand or even not by hand, but even with the aid of some software, this is a process that might take me a week, might take me two weeks to perform all the necessary features that the AI completes uh, in a couple of hours every night after the market is closed. So what ends up happening is we have 60 plus strategies that are continually optimized to perform best in the current market environment. And by the way, I should say these 60 strategies all, uh, you know, attempt to do different things, right? They, some are long based strategies, some are short based strategies. Um, Some are holding stocks for, two hours, some are holding stocks for four hours, some are 30 minutes. Uh, they all have different parameters, um, but, uh, but they're all kind of laid out. And so these 60 strategies on a nightly basis after they've been re-optimized, uh, the engine will then kind of assess the current market environment. Um, what's the S&P 500 doing? Is it trending up? Is it trending down? How's the NASDAQ doing? Is it volatile? Is it high volume? Is it low volume? That kind of stuff takes all these inputs into the soup and determines the type of market environment we are in. And based on that, the AI will try to match up, you know, a handful of strategies, you know, anywhere between say five and ten of five and ten of our available 60 strategies. It'll pick the five or ten strategies that the AI thinks have the best statistical chance to perform on the next trading day, to deliver profits on the next trading day. And then the next trading day, once it gets going, those five or six strategies or five or 10 strategies are active and those are sending us trades for us to follow along with or, you know, auto execute. Uh, we could talk about that later, but um, it, it, it sends us the trades that we can follow along and trade. And that gives me, the trader, the confidence of knowing that these are strategies that have been back tested and optimized and uh, have demonstrated success. I have that confidence of knowing that there's an edge here. The strategy knows that there's an edge. And so if I put these trades on, I should know that, you know, then every trade is not going to be a winner. In fact, some, you know, trades are losers. Sometimes entire days are losers. But over time, if I do enough of these trades, statistically speaking, I should come out ahead. And that's really all we can hope for as a trader is to have an edge to execute and then execute against it as often as we can. So the, the, the Holly AI, what it has done, if you think about it, and let me back up, it, it's, it's taken that whole process that has been a struggle for me, and that is coming up with new strategies, making those strategies work best, and back testing them, and going through that whole process. But instead of me just armed with one strategy to execute that I hope is going to work, and me uh, you know, maybe being slow to adapt to the strategy not working in the current environment, I've got an AI engine that's serving me up strategies every day that based on the numbers, based on the stats, these are the strategies that are performing best in the market right now. And they change every day, right? Some strategies, you know, you might see more often than others, but the fact of the matter is the strategies that are active on each day are the best strategies in our hopper uh, that tend to work. Uh, So really it comes down to my job when I'm using Holly, we call her Holly, my job is simply to execute, right? I don't need to go through the process every day of backtesting strategies, coming up with new ideas, uh, going through that whole process. The AI does that for me. I can't stress how important that is, how much time that saves me as a trader. I no longer have to spend my nights and weekends away from my family and friends and fun uh, sweating away to computer, which by the way, I did that many years. I mean, <laughs> I like to look back at the years 20, 2006 to about 2012 is like the dark period of my trading career. I just, I just was I head down, dug in, in my, my office and my, and my house, just constantly back testing strategies. My wife was like, what are you doing in there? She thought I was doing something nefarious, but no, I was just crunching numbers and just being a loner, being a loser. <laughs> you know, it's funny thinking back on it, but the AI, the trade ideas, AI, solves that problem for me. And it gives me the confidence to execute uh, in a marketplace uh, with edge. And I'm telling you folks, that's the name of the game. For anyone who's been around this game long enough, you know, 
the Holy Grail, and I hate to use the word Holy Grail, but I mean, the Holy Grail is finding, is finding strategies with edge and then having as many opportunities as possible to execute against that edge, right? If you've got, you got a strategy that, uh, statistically speaking, makes you money, you want to, <laughs> ideally, you could trade a thousand times a day on that strategy, right? The more you can execute, the better. I mean, that's the whole uh, high-frequency trading model, right? If you think about it, high-frequency trading algorithms, they're scalping fractions of a penny per trade, right? They have an edge and they make fractions of a penny per trade, which sounds like nothing. They might make, you know, 50 cents on a trade, but their edge is they can do that trade hundreds of thousands of times in a, in a week, for example. And all of a sudden those nickels and dimes and quarters uh, add up to some serious, serious coin. That's kind of the same concept here, right? We just, we want to have an edge. We want to execute it against it as, as often as possible. The, the, the Holly AI uh, allows you to do that. And the nice thing is, and, and, uh, and by the way, I'm not, I'm not going to do a product demo here. I'm not, I'm not going to log into the software and show you guys. I just, you know, there's a lot of bells and whistles and it just doesn't really translate well in a webinar. If, if you want to learn more about the AI, uh, in fact, let me skip along a slide here. If you want to learn more about it and, and play around with it and, and test it, I would encourage you to go to uh, uh, trade-ideas.com forward slash Sean, uh, where you can find a discount link to try it out. And there's no commitment. Uh, we do monthly and annual subscriptions. If you do monthly, it'll go until you cancel it and you'll never be charged again. Uh, but if you go to trade-ideas.com forward slash Sean, you can find a discount code uh, to try it out. Uh, and I, I would encourage you to do so. So again, I'm not going to do a demo here. It just, it, you know, I don't want to bore you guys with that. I just want to cover the high level concepts of, of what we're trying to do and show you that we've made it a little bit easier for you. We've solved one of the greatest uh, challenges for some traders, myself included, and that is we've taken the hard work of building strategies and testing them and, and optimizing them and paper trading them. We've taken all that out of the loop for you so that you can have the confidence to trade with, uh, with an edge. So with that, um, I am going to open the floor. Uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, Anka, I mean, I don't know if you're listening right now, but, uh, I'm happy to, to take a, take any questions. And by the way, let me just throw this back up here. Uh, if you ever want to email me, my email address is Sean at trade dash ideas.com. I'm very active on Twitter. Happy to engage with anybody on Twitter. My handle is at Chicago Sean. Uh, so please uh, reach out to me. Uh, but uh, if, if anyone has any questions, let me uh, close my screen here. I don't, I don't know if I've got a questions panel over here somewhere that I can view. Um, but I think I am complete uh, for now. Um, but I'm happy to hang her out for another 10 minutes if anyone has any questions. Where do I see... Come on, guys. Question. <laughs> hey, if there's no questions, that's totally fine. No worries. Okay. I will not be insulted. <laughs> I know. I have been using um, trade ideas for many years, and it is a wonderful product uh, because once you have, you know, and this is my point of view, and maybe you have some questions here, but I like to trade uh, simple strategies. And I, it, uh, trade idea is fantastic because you can customize it to the way you can trade, uh, and your personal preference, you know, like everybody's different. I like to trade stocks, for instance, that are heavily traded. So you can select, you know, the amount of shares that you want, minimum amount of shares. Like I like to trade 1.5 million shares of stocks. Um, and, uh, so, so you have different, uh, different strategies that you can build. It's such a versatile product and with Sean, you get a discount, just try it out and uh, see if you like it. I mean, I've been using it for so many years, uh, and it is definitely a fantastic product, uh, highly customizable to your needs. Uh, and, uh, I'm telling you, like it's going to make a difference in your trading. Like I, I, I would not, ha I would not speak of it, <laughs> and I would not have Sean here if I, I was not a user and a true believer in it. Well, I think okay. uh, I appreciate you saying that, Anka, and, and she's right. I mean, and, and one thing I didn't, I failed to mention in this presentation is, is there's a lot more to trade ideas than just the AI. The AI is kind of our latest baby. Uh, you know, it's kind of like a, the focus uh, of the company recently. But I mean, trade ideas has been around since 2003. We've been building tools for active traders ever since the beginning. And as Anka mentioned, 
Uh, you don't have to trade the AI. You can build your own strategies and, and have them and, and, and have a Windows alert windows that, that alert you when it's time to, to make a trade. You can even automate that. Uh, there's a way to do that where you can uh, connect it right to your brokerage account and, and have it trade for you. Uh, and there's lots of ways to build your own custom scans so that you can uh, you know, have a window on the stocks that are setting up uh, according to whatever parameters uh, are important to you. Um, so there's a lot more to trade ideas than just the AI. Uh, the AI is what we're most proud of right now. It's our, our latest baby. It's, we've, we launched it uh, publicly in 2016. It's, uh, it's done very well, um, depending on your point of view. Um, if you've taken every trade, which admittedly is hard, but if you have taken every trade that AI has produced since inception in 2016, uh, during that time period, you would have outperformed the S&P 500 by nearly three to one. Now, again, depending on your point of view, that's either a fantastic result or it's not even worth getting out of bed. <laughs> it just kind of depends on the type of trader you are and what you're trying to accomplish. But either way, there's edge there and it's been demonstrated. Uh, and so we're very proud of it. And, and the, the kind of the latest uh, whiz bang feature with, uh, with the AI is, is, our, uh, is our connecting with it uh, to Brokerage Plus, which allows the traders to auto trade the AI uh, you have to have an account with Interactive Brokers currently. We're, we're, we're working on some more brokers, but right now, only Interactive Brokers. You, you can auto-trade direct, or you can have Holly trade for you. Now, caveat, very important caveat. I strongly discourage anyone who's never auto-traded anything uh, to sign up to trade ideas and expect to just start auto trading Holly right away and sail off to the sunset rich and happy. Um, <laughs> While that's possible, um, I, I, I tell people, listen, you need to spend time with the AI for a little while manually trading it so you get a flow, get a feel for the flow of how it works and, and what you can expect and, and what the profits are like and what the drawdowns are like. You really need to manually have your hands in there um, to trade it. And then once you've done that for a, 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 a length of time, which of course is different for everybody, uh, but once you've grown comfortable with that, then you can consider auto trading Holly. Uh, because I mean, look, it sounds simple and sexy, but auto trading is a different animal. It's not for everybody. It's definitely for advanced traders uh, who are comfortable with risk and comfortable giving up control. Um, so once you get to that point, it's a fantastic tool and, and we think you'll enjoy it. But, um, you know, we, we get people coming to us every day brand new to trading, brand new to the markets. And they're like, oh, I heard uh, Holly's doing really well and I can auto trade it. Uh, I'm going to go fund my account and I want to start a trade idea subscription and I want you guys to make me money. And uh, I, I, I love the enthusiasm, but I like to tamper their expectations as best I can. <laughs> um, Anka, for some reason, I don't have the ability to see the questions panel. So if there's anyone who has a question, if you could just let me know and maybe read it to me and I'm happy okay. to address it. Okay, if not, absolutely. We'll move forward. Yes, absolutely. But correct me if I'm wrong. This was actually a question uh, that uh, came from a trader. Uh, the question is, can you trade Holly? Can you take the signals from Holly manually? The answer is absolutely yes. And in fact, for the first three and a half years of Holly's existence, that how, that's how it was presented to subscribers. What happens is uh, you'll see trades happen in Holly in real time. Uh, you know, you'll be running your trade idea software on your desktop uh, and you'll get an audio alert when a trade happens. So you'll see the trade when it comes into the blotter. Uh, you'll see it. You'll see the price that uh, the AI got into the trade. You will see the profit target level. You'll see the stop loss level. Um, so you'll have everything you need to know to get into the trade. And, uh, you know, hopefully you can get in and get at a price as close to Holly as she did. I mean, maybe you'll get a 10 cents worse fill. Maybe you'll get a 10 cents better fill depending on how fast you are. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Most people, in fact, I mean, to this day, most people manually uh, trade Holly as it is. Uh, new customer, we are starting to get more and more people auto trading the Holly as they're growing comfortable with it. Um, but the vast majority of people manually trade it. And that's fine. I mean, that's, that, that's what it was originally built to do. That's fantastic. You have three more questions. Greg mm -hmm. is asking you if you can make your projections and setups and how much a month does it cost uh, for each individual trader to join your group? Okay. So it's a two-part question. I believe the first part was what we can expect to make. Is that what he said? 
Yes. Really? Well, I mean, look, I, I, I can't tell you that uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, I can't predict the future. <laughs> but number two, um, everyone's going to trade different account sizes. Everyone's going to ha uh, have different levels of risk. One of the nice things you could do, uh, uh, you know, well, if you're manually trading, obviously you're in control of your, your share size, right? Like you, you might decide you want to trade 100 shares at a clip. You might decide you want to trade 1,000 shares at a clip, or you might trade a different share size for every trade based on how much risk you're comfortable uh, putting on on each individual trade. So that's not really a question I can answer for you. Um, it's gonna, it's, you know, again, I can't predict the future. Uh, I, I can just tell you that, like, like I mentioned before, the AI, if you've taken every trade that the AI has done since inception in 2016, uh, you have outperformed the S&P 500 by nearly three to one, and that is after factoring in commissions and slippage. Uh, so that much I can tell you. Um, the second part of the question was how much does it cost? Is that right? Yes. How much does it cost? Per month? Um, so if you want to use Holly, that would require a premium subscription to trade ideas. Uh, and a premium subscription costs two twenty eight per month. Uh, if you do an annual subscription, it works out to be a little less per month. Uh, the annual is, I think, twenty two sixty eight for the whole year that you pay up front. That's in a, a lower effective monthly rate. Um, if you go to the link that you see here on the screen right now, trade-ideas.com forward slash Sean, uh, you'll find a discount code to get a discount off your first month, uh, or you could use that discount code to purchase an annual subscription, which obviously is even more savings. Um, but uh, yeah, that's how much it runs. A typical month, if you're a month-to-month -month subscriber, the premium subscription, it's two twenty eight per month. We do have some cheaper options, but for the AI, if you want to use Holly, you have to have a premium subscription. All right. Another question is, what criteria do you decide? Uh, do you use uh, when uh, to decide when you change strategies? Well, if I'm using the AI, um, thankfully, I don't have to make that decision. The AI does that decision for me every night. Uh, I'm backtracking here a little bit, but every night when the AI runs through the processes of backtesting and optimizing every strategy, it also analyzes the current market environment and determines based on its inputs which strategies have the best statistical chance to perform best on the next trading day. Now, that's not a guarantee it's going to make money. Those strategies uh, oftentimes will lose money. But over time, again, the statistics play out. Uh, as long as you, you know, are, are true to following the strategies every day, um, you should make money over time. Um, so, so the AI does it for me. That's the good news. I don't have to pick the strategies to perform. I just, I log in in the morning and I see, okay, these are the seven strategies or six strategies or two strategies that are active today. Boom, I'm going to do those trades. And it's, it's, it's pretty easy. Uh, and I love that. That's fantastic. One other question. Yep. Um, do you have a win-loss stat for all strategies? Um, I think I understand the question. When you, uh, I might have, I might be able to see it on this slide here. Uh, no, it doesn't show it. Um, but when you are looking at the AI every day, it'll list the active strategies uh, that are active for the day. And you can show the win loss rate uh, uh, of that strategy according to its most recent back test. So you can see that strategy XYZ has a 62% win rate based on its most recent back test. Uh, so yeah, you can see, um, and, and, by the way, some people use that information as means of de de deciding what trades to take. I mean, there's no one right way to execute with Holly. I mean, some guys will look at the, or girls will, will look at the, the strategies that open the day. They say, okay, I'm only going to trade the strategies that have a, win, have a winning percentage rate of higher than 70%. And, you know, they're going to ignore all the trades that come through from the strategies that have a lower winning percentage. Uh, you know, if that works for them, that's great. I mean, I caution people against that. Uh, you know, I, I, t I tend to like uh, the, the strategies with the lower win rates because usually those strategies, the wins are much larger, right? I mean, in, in magnitude, your wins are much bigger than your losers, but they're just less frequent. That's why your win rate is lower, but that's just my preference. Uh, Greg is also asking, how many companies use Holly? How many companies? Um, well, I mean, Holly, and, and I should say that trade ideas, uh, the vast majority of our customers are retail traders. Um, I'd say probably, I'm, I'm guessing here, but I'd say at least 80% of our customers are retail traders like you and me. Uh, but there are companies that use trade ideas or are prop firms that use trade ideas. Uh, there are a handful of hedge funds that, that use trade ideas. 
Um, so they're out there. Uh, I don't know the exact number for you. I mean, I, it wouldn't be a large number because uh, again, we're, we're more geared towards the retail trader um, and that's 80 to 90% of our business for sure. Is that, is, did we cover it all, Anka? Yes, no other questions. Wonderful. Um, and guys, if you have any other questions for Sean, he's here. This is the perfect time. Yeah, uh, if, if, if you think of anything later, please feel free to reach out. You can e email me at sean at trade-ideas.com or hit me on Twitter. I'm Chicago Sean. I'm easy to find. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Anka, I appreciate you having me here, buddy. Um, Thank looking you forward so to doing, much, Sean. Looking and forward to seeing quick, you again. Yeah, maybe a quick reminder about your event in October. Oh, right on. Yeah. Uh, so again, it's the last September in October. Uh, I think it's a Saturday, October 26th, I believe. Uh, it's in downtown San Diego. It takes place at the top floor of, I think, the tallest building in downtown San Diego. It's got 360 degree views of all of San Diego. It's stunningly beautiful. We had our event there last year. Absolutely loved it. We were like, we have to do it here again. <laughs> so we are. Um, we've got uh, we've got a bunch of speakers lined up, a uh, few more to be added, but uh, Jeff Mackey is, is one of our uh, headliner speakers. Uh, if anyone familiar with Jeff Mackey? Great guy, hilarious guy. Um, he's got some war stories. He's going to be fun for sure. We got Brian Shannon coming out, Alpha Trends, uh, JC Peretz from All Star Charts. Uh, there, there's a few more I can't think of off the top of my head, but we'll have a lot of great speakers and and it's just great to network with other traders, right? People who are doing what we do. Uh, I mean, that's where I met Anka last year at a at a conference in Orlando, and uh, we had a room full of people just like us, and it was just it was awesome to be in that kind of environment. Uh, bounce ideas, share stories, uh, talk about what's working for us, talk about what's not working. I mean, it was a very fruitful weekend for me that time and, and the Trade Ideas Summit uh, will be for you as well. So thanks, Anka, for letting me plug that. I hope to see you there for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. All right. Well, that's wonderful. I'll, I'll let, uh, I'll, I'll seed the floor to your next uh, speaker. I think you got somebody lined up right after me. I think you might have the guys from <laughs> Fighter, right? Thank you so much, Sean. And don't forget, guys, if you want to get a hold of Sean, he's on Twitter, Chicago Sean, or shoot him an email is Sean at tradeideas.com. And uh, he would really be happy to uh, get back to you and answer more of your questions and test drive the system and see if you like it. Uh, it is a fantastic system. Like I said, uh, if uh, I haven't been using, I have been using it for so many years, and uh, there's a reason for that. I absolutely love it. Uh, and uh, it's good for day trading, for swing trading. It's great for investing, for options. You name it. You could customize it. You could use Holly. It, it's fantastic. It, it's like you don't need anything else. You know, it's you have a scanner that pops up your trading ideas throughout the trading session. I mean, you don't have to do any scouring. So this is very important. So thank well, you so much, Sean. I really appreciate you coming to Tech Wizards 2019. And we're going to get ready. I see that uh, Jake is already here. So uh, we could actually start projecting.